Hello and welcome to this online service for First Presbyterian Church of Bryan today, August the 16th of the year 2020. Today, if you are viewing us on your computer screen, your screen should look something like this, with the video showing here and just below in this circled portion, you'll see a button that says show more. If you click that button, you'll get a drop down of our complete bulletin with all of the hymn lyrics and information. If you are viewing us today by smartphone, your screen should look something like this, with the video showing here, and just below there is a chevron arrow. If you press that arrow, you'll get the same drop down with a scrollable version of our full bulletin. And today, if you're watching us by Smart TV, please refer to our website, listed here on the bottom of your screen, fpcbryan.org. Once again, that is fpcbryan.org. There you can find a full printable version of our bulletin, as well as information on our ministries, our mission, and electronic giving in the upper right-hand corner of our home screen with the button labeled Give. We hope that you enjoy our worship service this morning. Once again, welcome. In Psalm 29, we find these words. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Would you join us in singing together hymn number 482, Baptized in Water. Spirit, may we engage in our prayer confession before Almighty God. Would you join me in prayer? 
Lord, in these fast-paced, yet motionless days, even in one place, we seem to wander. We seek you. We seek love. We seek to be known. We strive to hold dear to and to treasure the simplicity of joy as we battle the weight of anxiety and fear. On this our pilgrimage journeys through life, we sometimes forget that as much as we are on a journey, this journey is also bound to us. As your people, we walk the tightrope of faith with the gravity of human life, pulling us firmly down and the promises of your grace lifting us up. Forgive us our failings and our sins. Help us to embrace the world as it is as much as we embrace the hope for your everlasting peace. Empower us to know that you are with us, before us, and yea, Lord, even behind us with each step. Open us to know you along the journey. In these moments of silence, may we feel you here in this time, and may we recognize your calling on our spirits as we pray in silence. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. reading from Luke chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. Listen now for the word of the Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. And John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, his winnowing fork in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with an unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and had begun to pray, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove and a voice came down from heaven you are my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God Last year in January, I had the privilege of visiting the River Jordan with a friend of mine. A new section of the river had actually just opened up only a week before we had arrived there. And as we were in the car making our way down the desert road, I looked to my right and to my left, and I saw these fences identical on both sides of the road. And they looked to be government issued, and they had signs on them all the way down. And it was explained to me that these fences were placed there and this road had just been cleared of the bombs that were in place for the Six Day War in 1967. So if you were to cross over the fence, who knows what you might find under your feet. Now this was a stark reminder of the violence and the darkness of the world that we find ourselves in, though we were searching and looking ahead to the hope of the waters 
of Christ's baptism. As we approached the river, the atmosphere began to change. We could hear singing and laughter and joy. There was a Korean group and an African group down by the river, each singing songs in their own native languages. And the African group, they were down in the river, splashing and playing in the water, all with unbridled bliss. <laughs> I placed my hands down into the water. In the river, it was cold and refreshing to the touch. And I sat there for a time, and I enjoyed watching these groups frolic in the waters. This seemed to be a place where we were not anything but children of God. All that would separate us was washed away. It was beautiful. It was like a place set aside from the world, a bubble universe. I guess that is what holy ground feels like. Across the river, I could see soldiers in heavy gear with guns in hand, and I asked my friend who they were, and he told me that they were the army of Jordan, and we were sitting at the border. So I playfully asked him, what would happen if I swam across and said hi? And he said, well, they probably wouldn't waste their bullets on you, but you would get quite the escort back over to Israel. And we chuckled a bit. And he went on to tell me that the structure that they were guarding was actually a Christian church. In 24 hours' time, the Reformed Church in Jerusalem and the church across the river in Jordan would line the banks and sing hymns together for the first time in history. Jordanians and Israelites would lift their voices in praise of Jesus Christ together and unite in their love of God around this spot where 2,000 years earlier, Christ and John the Baptist may have stood in prayer, blessing, and praise together. There's something about Israel and Jordan that reminds you of how alive you are, of how mortal that we all are, and how love is a choice and a calling that we are compelled to follow. Now, making our way past the minefields to a place of great joy that exists in presence of armed military men and to hear singing in so many languages, it was surreal. It was beautiful. Life is a dark and perilous journey, but there are places of light within it. There is a place where brother and sister meet across borders and man-made barriers. There is a hope in all of us that yearns for our Messiah and rallies around his love and his light. Jesus was no stranger to darkness. Just as Pastor Ted reminded us in the birth narrative last week, Jesus was born while being hunted. He was raised a refugee in Egypt, and he worked in his father's shop through poverty, all while learning the faith. And now, his feet lead him to this moment to be baptized, as was Jewish custom. The people were hopeful that a leader would emerge. A living hope would lead them to the light beyond this life. And they gathered, filled with expectation. Who could unite them in God's way? And we do that for church, don't we? We gather filled with expectation or anticipation of our Savior to come and show us the way. Do we not wait for him now? Each week that we journey through this life, we know that there are minefields around us, but we do not know where those bombs are in the twists and turns of the paths that we make. And so we come and we seek something to hold on to a greater hope, a shepherd of God. Jesus, too, came to this river drawn in by the living water and the custom of his people. And John washes the waters over Jesus, and Jesus begins to pray. He prays to God, and the Holy Spirit comes down upon him. In Luke's telling, it is only after prayer that God speaks to Jesus 
And God speaks only to Jesus. As I gazed upon the window a few weeks ago in anticipation for today, one symbol that was prominent to me stood out. Now this thing, it, it belongs, but it also doesn't belong. The symbol was conceptualized by humankind, and it was given to us by God, but it oddly stands out of time and out of place and yet it's also a solid symbol of baptism. And that symbol would be the scallop in John's left hand. In the scripture, there's no scallop mentioned, and truthfully, they are not found in the area where Jesus was baptized. So why do we see it here? The scallop was first given to us as a symbol of penance and pilgrimage in the Middle Ages. Now today, we recognize it as a symbol of the Camino de Santiago, a pilgrimage in Spain. Scallop shells are found along the shores of the northern Spanish area, an area called Galicia, where this well-known pilgrimage to this tomb of St. James exists. Now every year, millions of travelers, beginning at various points throughout Europe, make the pilgrimage each and every summer. In the Middle Ages, this pilgrimage was made as a penance for sin, and those who were tasked to walk it were required to bring back a local souvenir as proof of its completion. Now, the shells became very popular for this purpose. Not only were they great tools for scooping up water to drink or eating out of, but they were found in abundance and they were light all over the shores where these pilgrims would walk by. Now, over time, the shell became a symbol of the pilgrimage itself, a religious journey toward heaven or God, as cited in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, which reads, we are pilgrims and strangers on earth. And let me say that again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, we are pilgrims and strangers on earth. That is so very true. And in a way, we are all on a pilgrimage as we journey through this life to make it to God. Those who I know that have had the privilege to take the Camino as a pilgrimage have all come back changed somehow. They speak of how transformative the experience is. A pilgrimage is not just a hike from point A to point B, but it is a spiritual and a religious experience the Catholic Church in their catechism numbered 2,691 beautifully states it like this. Pilgrimages evoke our earthly journey toward heaven and are traditionally very special occasions for renewal in prayer. For pilgrims seeking living water, shrines are special places for living forms of Christian prayer. The journey must be accompanied with prayer and devotion, and it is naturally filled with much time for personal reflection and self-growth. And along the pilgrimage, we meet others who walk alongside us, Pisanos, friends in spirit who come and go. Now, if you journey to the Camino de Santiago today, you will be guided by scallop shell markers, now the symbol of pilgrimage. Often, travelers will also receive a shell at the very beginning of their journey, and they will either hold on to it or pin it to their clothing to remind them of their purpose. So, why do we see it here in the baptism window? Well, many scholars believe that it was Jesus' baptism that he realizes the fullness of the nature of his calling as the Son of God. This was the beginning of his ministry. In Luke's passage, it is important to note that the Holy Spirit coming down was not a public show of grandeur, but a private moment upon which Jesus was praying after being baptized by John. This is the day marked as the official beginning of Jesus' ministry and mission, and like a commissioning or an affirmation of the call, an ordaining of sorts, this day marks the beginning of Jesus' journey as the Christ. 
Now in two weeks, we will see the symbol of Jesus' completion of his earthly pilgrimage. In the flag of Galicia, the flag along the path of this famous pilgrimage, the Camino de Santiago in Spain. But today, we celebrate Jesus' first steps as a new man in his divine calling to lead God's people in the ways of light. We come today filled with expectation. In times of darkness, a pandemic, an election, an economic storm, isolation, grief, separation from loved ones, and so much more, we, like the generations before us, come together, filled with hope, anticipation, and expectation. We wait for the Messiah to take our hands and lead us to home, to a place of joy, peace, song, and light, away from the minefields of our pilgrimage life journeys. Jesus was created, called, baptized, and blessed to show us the path of goodness in God. In his humanity, he knew the darkness, and in his holiness, he knew the ways of light. As we make our way on our pilgrim journey, we must also examine the moments in which that journey must have begun. So reflect with me. When did your path to God on this earth truly reveal itself to you? Was it Christ who led you to know that you too are a beloved child of God? Remember your baptism. That's what we mean when we say that. Remember your baptism. Remember that scallop shell moment when your journey truly began and your awareness of it. We live in times that make our bones shake and our heads spin and every breath that we take is no longer taken for granted. And joy is not so easily passed by. We seek unity in a better way of life with peace between peoples and beauty restored in our eyes. And I truly believe that. No matter who you are or what makes you different from someone else, we all have this desire. And as the faithful, we seek someone to take us by the hand and lead us home to that place that holy ground. And truly, I tell you, the path to God, the pilgrimage of righteousness is not found in the promises of any earthly man, but in the signs of God through the Holy Spirit who guides us step by step through the minefields of this insane life. There is only one Christ, only one Messiah, and only in his way will we discover God's grace, God's truth, God's light, and God's radical love. As I went down to the Jordan River to pray, never did I see such glory in so many shades of faith. We walk this earth as pilgrims, and the path before us is unknown. The warning signs and the hidden minds serve not to guide us when darkness covers their nature. We need God, and we need to remember God. God is the one who can take us home to that holy place. And God lives in Christ and only in Christ. Jesus, he lives in Jesus, whose pilgrimage on earth paves the way for our footsteps to follow, and that is what we celebrate in this window today. It would be so nice if the ways of God were marked with scallop shells as the Camino de Santiago, but we'll have to make do with the markers of living prayer that we discover along the way, prayer that leads us to listen for Jesus. It was in prayer that Jesus heard the affirmation of God's calling on his life. 
It is in prayer where we too may listen and know the things that God has in store for us. It is with eyes that see with faith that we will finally know the way forward together as one people, not separated by any nation or bound behind any walls. It is in Christ, in God, in the living waters that we will know love for God's own in every color, every gender, every make and model in God's kingdom. So friends, pray. Pray and remember your baptism, that scallop shell moment of your journey on this earth. That your pilgrimage may continue in the light of the path that Jesus has marked for you. That is where the Holy Spirit is found, where the word of God is made clear in devotion and in prayer and openness of heart filled with anticipation of God in our midst. Pilgrim people, there is a way forward and I do not know the intricacies of its direction, but let us use all that we have and all that we are to prayerfully find it. That we too may come together to a place of joy and unity and love amongst the minefields and pitfalls of this pilgrim way that we follow. The leader that we need and have always needed is the one and only Jesus Christ. Son of God, Son of Man, baptized, called, crucified, and risen for you and for me, that we too may know the ways of God's love. So come, come with expectation and anticipation, and let us praise God that there is a way forward in times such as these, a way of grace and of unifying love of God for all peoples. Amen. Let us pray. God, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and raise us to live our baptismal vows empowered by the Holy Spirit and the example of Christ our Lord in whose name we pray. Grant us to hear your voice. Be present to feel your spirit living and moving within us and to keep our sights on Christ who walked before us in the holy and human pilgrim journey of life. We pray for the leaders of the world. Give them your wisdom and hearts that beat for the well-being of all people and creatures of your making. We pray for our educators, staff, students, and parents that as schools reopen, all are welcomed into a safe environment. Give each one strength to face each day and courage when challenges rise to meet them, especially in the uncertainties of these days. We pray for those who are ill, vulnerable, or facing hardship. Lord, in your grace, in your love, may your people persevere and know that you are with them. May each one find ways to partner with others for mutuality in caring and supporting. We pray all these things in the spirit of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join us in singing our closing hymn, Oh, for a thousand tons to see.
peace of God which passes all understanding and let us go in the blessing of God's love and grace and peace which far surpass any of our imagining let us go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to love and serve the Lord today tomorrow and always amen <laughs>